A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. So you see, on a daily basis I receive problems that people want me to show on this channel via email, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and the like. And one of these days someone sent me to my Facebook page, Mathematical Ploys for Flemmy Boys, this problem. We have three connected circles, okay, they are all tangent to each other and they lie on the same plane basically. And we are supposed to find out the relationship between X, Y and Z. And the person just sent me this pic and just wrote under it, it's a classic Japanese puzzle. I have no idea if it's some kind of competitive mathematics problem or the like, but it's an interesting one and the relationship is pretty cool. So yeah, we are going to dive right in and you can try it out for yourself. See if you can find a relationship between X, Y and Z for yourself. Other than that, video is sponsored by the wonderful people over on Bellroy. More information at the end of the video. They got some good products going, so keep watching. Now, when I tried this out at first, I was using analytic geometry, as always. And this was actually helping to a certain extent. I was able to find out a few things about X, Y and Z. But there's actually an easier way. The methods I use for analytic geometry basically were applied to the method I'm going to use now too because what we are going to do is we are going to connect the radii to one another and what we are going to do is we are going to find three equations because we have three unknowns and then we are good, okay? Then we are going to connect these. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take a look at each pair of circles individually. Let's start with the two big nuts that we have right here. These nuts! <laughs> Just look at these nuts. And what we are going to do is we are going to connect these nuts through the centers. Now I want you guys to notice something. Since the center always connects with the arc of the circle, this length right here is going to be set once again, the radius of the biggest nut, and this right <laughs> big nut, makes more for reference, and of the smaller nut that we got right here, we are also going to have the radius x, meaning overall this side length that we are going to have here is z plus x. Okay, this is good. Now, next up what we are going to do is we are going to create ourselves a right triangle in here. The right triangle is going to start at this point. We are once again going to connect it downwards. This right here is the radius once again, z. And now we are going to form the right angle exactly here. And voila, this right here is our ugly long right triangle. Now we don't know what this side length is. We are going to call it um, R for now. I really don't care what the variable's name is. But more importantly, we can find a relationship between this side length right here, this very small one, basically it's pretty small, and the radius set. Namely, if you take a look at our construction that we got right here, this side length right here is just a tiny little bit more than the radius x. How much more? Well, it's just our radius z minus the side length x or minus the radius x. Okay, I hope you can see this. We are getting the projection over here to our x, to our center point of the middle nut, you could say, giving us overall that this little part right here is nothing other than z minus x. And now we have our first connection by Papa Pythagoras, namely that r squared plus and then we are going to get z minus x squared is equal to z plus x squared. And do you know what's even cooler than that? Papa Pythagoras actually gives us the chance to get the difference of two squares. What we are going to do is we are going to subtract this part on both sides, giving us that r squared is nothing other than z plus x squared minus z minus x squared. And now this right here is the difference of two squares obviously. Factoring this is going to give us, okay, first part plus the second one. So z plus x plus z minus x. This is good, something's going to cancel out. And next up we are going to take this part minus what we got in here. So times z plus x minus z and then plus x. Our negative is going to turn into a positive. And this is good, that's a nice simplification. X and X is going to cancel out here, giving us 2Z and here Z is going to cancel out, giving us 2X. Meaning overall R squared is nothing other than 
2 times 2 is going to give us 4, 4 times x times z. And now taking the square root on both sides, the positive branch at that, because r is a positive side length in the Euclidean space, gives us overall that r is nothing other than square root of 4 is 2. We can use the multiplicative property of the square root to break it up basically, because x and z, their product is also positive, 2 times the square root of x times z. That's a pretty cool re relationship between r and these radii. Now we are going to go through the same construction with the other circles pairwise. Let us go ahead and take the tiny nut and the tiny little bit bigger nut next. Now what we are going to have is we are going to have y right here, okay, the circle with radius y, and then <laughs> that's a good circle, that's not a good circle, that's an uh, ellipse or something of that sort. Now what we are going to do is once again we are going to connect our centers to one another. By the same logic as before, since they are connected and they are passing through the arcs of their tangents basically, okay, we are going to get that this length right here is going to be x once again plus y. So this right here is x plus y. Now next up we are going to form another right triangle. We are going to do the same thing as before, giving us right triangle in here. Now we are going to call this length after r comes s. And now what we're going to do is we're going to see yet again, since this line goes downwards, just like before, okay, this is this line, we are going to get that this is just the radius x minus the small side length y that we are having here, meaning this right here is x minus y. And once again, we are going to get the same situation as we did up here. The smaller side length is of the form x minus another something, or we had z minus x right here. Meaning overall, if we were to go through the same process once again for s, we are going to get that s is nothing other than 2 times the square root of, and the variables now are going to be x and y. That's a pretty sparse relationship. And now you can check for yourself that the same logic holds if we take a look at the big nut and the small nut. Namely, if we were to draw this out once again, we are going to get our big nutty boy, and then we are going to get the small nutty boy, and now we are going to connect centers yet again. This radius was z plus, and this down here was nothing other than y. This is z plus y. Now we are going to project it downwards, giving ourselves a right triangle. This little part right here is going to be our radius y once again, meaning this right here is z minus y. And we are going to call this one right here mm, t, okay? And now, once again, going through the same logic is going to give us that t is equal to 2 times the square root of, and now z times y. But here's one very cool thing. So we got three equations right now, but we still got a bunch of unknowns right here in some kind of way. We want to connect s, t and r in, in some way. And we are lucky with that, because if you take a look at the projections we did in here by construction, okay, I'm going to draw everything in here once again. The length that we got right here was nothing other than our s. Now, the next projection is going to be this one. Aha, the length that we got right here is nothing other than t, meaning s plus t added together is nothing other than r. And this sketch reminds me so much of the geometric proof of the arithmetic, geometric and harmonic mean, all the means. It kind of reminds me of that and it's pretty beautiful if you take a look at, at all the relationships here. Now the cool thing is that r is nothing other than 2 times the square root of x plus z. Uh, times z, Terry, sorry. But on the other hand, it's nothing other than s plus t. But we know what s and what t are. Namely, we are going to get the relationship 2 times the square root of xz is equal to 2 times the square root of xy and then plus 2 times the square root of zy. Now 2 is not equal to 0, is success of 1, by definition not equal to 0, we can cancel it out on both sides. And now you're going to notice something, namely, if we were to break up the square roots, both parts in here, the, the multiplication, both are, are positive, meaning we can factor out the square root of y here, and then we can divide both sides by it, giving us overall, or leaving us with, the square root of x times z divided by the square root of y. It's nothing other than, and now we are going to get the square root of x, plus the square root of z. 
But we are not done yet because what you're going to notice is if we were to divide both sides by the square root of x times z, the square root of x is going to cancel out here giving us 1 over the square root of z and the square root of z is going to cancel out with the square root of z here giving us 1 over the square root of x. Meaning overall the very cool relationship between all the radii basically or the circuits in general is going to be that 1 over the square root of 1 where y is the radius of the smallest circle is equal to 1 over the square root of the radius of the big nut plus 1 over the square root of the radius of the middle nut. And this right here is our relationship and I think that this is a pretty cool fact. And I hope you did like what you have seen today. And if you want to see more problems like these, if you are interested in more mathematics here on this channel, maybe also physics, then definitely make sure to support the channel by trying out a few of the products of today's sponsor Bellroy, who are kind enough to sponsor this episode here on this channel. Now when it comes to lifestyle products, Bellroy is actually one of my most favorite choices right now because not only are their products very stylish, no, they are also very functional. And this is something good because I for myself really like to uh, have a lot of tech with me all the time. And their products, for example, their 24 liter backpack gives me the chance to fit everything in here. Even my big Asus ZenBook Pro Duo fits in here very nicely. Even I have a lot of space left. And also what I got with my backpack is the so-called tech kit. In here I'm transporting all my tech that I need for my school life and the like. Be it USB cables, the mouse, etc. And that's not the only thing. Just like other brands, they create wallets. They started out with the wallets back in 2010, but now they are also engaging other products like these backpacks. And the cool things about their wallets is that they are also very functional. No need to have a huge bulge in your pants anymore because of your leather wallet. All you need to do is carry this little Apex twin sleeve around and you can just open it with one hand very comfortably and it looks pretty good. I really like the colors and the combinations of colors that are going on here. And you can fit up to eight cards into here and a bit of change. And in our electronic century, especially during Corona, we are all trying to pay without any kind of contact and without uh, the need to resource to any kind of spare cash in our wallets. So. Bellroy gives you a very good opportunity to kind of change your life and your lifestyle in general by wearing their products which are functional and very stylish overall. So if you want to try it out, if this feels like something for you, if you want to get a backpack 24 liters together with a tech kit and an Apex slim sleeve, then definitely make sure to try out the link at the top of the description. With it you are going to get 10% of your whole order, which is a great deal. So definitely make sure to try it out and support the channel this way. If you want to support the channel a bit more, go over to Flemmy's Wood and check out my new woodworking channel. I wanted to get monetized such that I can get the money for all my tools back. God, CNC for 3k. That was a huge investment, but maybe I'm going to get monetized at some point and the whole YouTube game is also going to work out for the other channel too. Also, don't forget to check out Stembridge EU, my platform for handcrafted stem products. And up until next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao, please stay safe.